What's going on fellas? We're busting out the big guns today. This burner just very well may be hotter than hell, but I've never been there and I don't plan on going, so I'm going to have to stick with a maybe on that. We're doing a little uh, switch up today here, and I wanted to talk about these burners for a second. Now, this burner here is hotter than this one, um, and I want to talk about the reasons why. Um, there's a little bit of a secret behind these things and I discovered long ago that the way you make a torch the hottest is that the combustion chamber itself has to get really hot. The, the flame typically will never get hotter than the combustion chamber itself. So if your combustion chamber isn't getting red hot or like white hot you're not going to be getting as hot as you could be had you made the combustion chamber out of a thin enough metal. Now I learned this because the hottest burner I've ever built was made out of extremely thin metal and that would have obviously never lasted. But it did enable us to produce temperatures that went far beyond the thermal couple's ability to register. So even though this burner would probably last forever. It still only tops, it tops out at 2,500 degrees and it takes a half hour to get there. This burner can get up to 2,530 degrees in about six minutes. And I'm talking a crucible of melted iron. Um, I melted um, a crucible full of cast iron with this burner in eight minutes from a cold start. This thing just gets so hot I can't measure it. Um, I believe the top temperature I've ever got was like 2600 degrees on this, but I melted steel one day, a steel cowling inside the crucible, which would indicate we actually hit 27 to 2800 degrees because that's the melting point of steel. Cast irons 21 to 2400. All right, fellas, so we're starting off with the recrystallized silicon carbide burner and we're going to see the drastic difference in performance. Now as I said this is a a pretty good burner. This thing's more like an airplane engine whereas the other burners more like a rocket engine. This thing will last and last. It will not burn away. Whereas the super high temp preheat burner only lasts about 400 hours before you start to burn pinholes through. But that's just kind of a the sacrifice you need to make to get those higher temperatures. Okay, we're going to take a look at two different timestamps, one at 15 minutes and one at 22 minutes to get a visualization of the time temperature correlation. This 15 minutes here, you can see, and this here is 22 minutes. So we still haven't even hit the max temp that we topped out at 15 minutes on the other burner we're about to see next. So after about 40, 45 minutes, we're gonna go ahead and pour this pot here and get a look at what it looks like being dumped into the cone mold. And then we're gonna fire up the other burner. And remember that 15 minute mark that with this burner, we were only able to achieve a temperature of 2,100 and some degrees. So remember that, because the next burner, the performance is phenomenal. So All right, it's game on here. We're shutting down. We're going to pull the crucible and get a look at this pour. I don't think I added enough flux. It does look nice and hot. We are a good white hot there. So just from the color temp chart, we're definitely blazing. Yeah, that's terrible. It's just not liquid enough. We're probably still in the 2400 degree area. I can't remember actually. I think we did hit 25 degree or 2500. It just took us forever. Actually, this was a 37 minute run that I had to cut short because of the rain. Okay, so now we separate the men from the boys here. This thing is not playing around. We're literally melting stainless steel underneath the crucible here. So this thing is screaming hot. I set my crucibles on top of a piece of stainless steel to transfer the heat to the bottom of the crucible because if you just set it on the crucible floor, not only does it melt to the floor sometimes, but the poor conductivity of 
those materials don't lend themselves well to heat transfer. All right, guys, let's get to the brass tacks here. I'm not just going to sit here and bore you with a bunch of clips of me holding up a thermal gun. We're at 2,444, 41 degrees, and we're about 16 minutes in here. I'm going to go ahead and do the pour, but um, because it seemed so liquid in there, I stirred it a couple times, and we are completely liquefied. It's 16 minutes in, and it's about ready to rain on me again. This is the second day in a row that I'm getting rained on, so let's check this out. And uh, look at how hot this thing is when I open it up. She ain't playing around. Pretty incredible. Let me get you moved over here where you can see the action. Look at that uh, preheat box, guys. That air preheat box is just blasting hot. That is so cool. This stuff is incredibly liquid. I actually almost got splashed with the piece of it because it's so liquid. But um, we have some phenomenal results on this pour, guys. You won't believe how much metal I get out of this batch. All right, fellas, so, although this is a nice burner, and it does get the job done, it just can't hold a candle to this bad boy. When it comes to endurance, this thing's gonna win the day. But when you just need high temp, you just got to do what you got to do. You got to get that combustion chamber glowing hot. If we were to make this out of an 18 gauge, it would get even hotter. This is 16 gauge. But we want this thing to last for a little while. It will eventually burn away after 400 to 800 hours, depending on how you run it. Uh, running it at max, you get about 400 hours out of this thing before little pinholes will start to burn through. But that's just the price you have to pay to get the burner to throw some really hot flames. This thing here, this combustion chamber does not get as hot as that combustion chamber. And as a result, it's not able to eject a flame that's as hot. Now, one of the reasons that's important is when this chamber is glowing red hot the way we see in some of those clips, um, the second that fuel enters in here, it's almost instantly vaporized by the IR infrared radiation. When you put your hand by this thing, it'll burn your hand off. Now, when you get really close, I can't imagine what would happen. So the fuel that's spraying out of this thing, it's being atomized, is being bombarded with that high energy infrared heat and, and it's being vaporized much more rapidly. So I believe that's one of the reasons that attribute the higher temperature. Secondly, if you have a cold combustion chamber, why would the flame get much hotter? Now in a forge, it will do that because the forge itself becomes the combustion chamber. It becomes the burner. That's kind of what happens with this thing in a sense. But this one here is different. We have an actual fireball burning inside of here that's throwing a flame out that can be confirmed to be over 2,550 at minimum and could be as high as 2,650 because this is a piece of stainless steel that the crucible sits on. And as you can see, it has melted. This is 304 stainless. I like to set the crucible on these plates because it doesn't stick that way. Some people use cardboard, but I think this transfers the heat a lot better than the bottom of the forge wood because it even though it's stainless and it's a horrible conductor it still conducts better than the forge floor wood so let's get this stuff out of the way here is that pour it looks much better we have actual glass appearance to it i did add a lot more flux this time big old nugget of metal in there there's some beads stuck here Still a little bit of impregnation there. I'll try and bust them out in a second, but uh, let's check this out. Oh boy, it's stuck in there. There we go. And that's interesting looking. It's got some different tones to it. Very heavy chunk of metal. I thought I seen some gold somewhere. There it is. Look at that. That's quite odd. 
So I'm gonna learn how to rework this ore. I'm pretty sure that a rotary furnace is gonna be the way to go to manage this stuff, to get these little impregnated beads out. We did much better this time though. Let's, uh, let's weigh this bad boy up. <sighs> See what happens here. 151 grams is the most I've ever gotten out of a crucible. Wow, look at that. Jeez, yesterday we got uh, some pretty pathetic yields. It mostly got stuck in the, um, here was one of yesterday's, 120 per crucible. And by just by switching out burners and using this hotter burner, in 15 minutes, I get this chunk. Man, that beats our old record. Nonetheless, it does appear that there's still a little wandering piece here in there. That piece is actually stuck in there. That's a little bead of metal. We have improved though, because we got hotter. You can see this here was just loaded with material and it doesn't have that vitrified look to it that has been turned to glass. So I'm gonna pick the rest of this out of here and get us a final yield, but man, that was impressive. This burner is freaking awesome. This this here is, like I said, it's a nice burner. You can melt cast iron in a half hour and all that, but man, it just can't, it can't cut it. This thing is just phenomenal. I'm so pleased with this thing's performance. It is, uh, wow, that's nuts. And we got hot enough that we were able to get most of that impregnated stuff out, so. Good deal. See if I can find a good juicy piece. There's a little bead. All right, I'm boring the hell out of you at this point. If we can keep doing that consistently, that is going to be a huge improvement on the process. So, very neat, very neat. That's a drastic improvement from last time. This just didn't even look like it was hot. It was having some serious problems. I guess a great analogy, a way that you could look at, with, at, at both these um, amazing devices without knocking them is that um, this is more of an airplane engine, okay? And this is a rocket engine. Rocket engines don't last very long, but they put out way more power than an airplane engine ever could.